We're now talking with Claudio Camellier, who is Vice President of Marketing Intelligence at Embraer. Thank you, Claudio, for having a, a, a spending some time with me. Let's start with the big picture. Uh, what are your thoughts on the 100 to 130 seat market? What's the Embraer's view on that, that market segment? It's, it's a very exciting market for us, Edison. Uh, as you know, we have the Embraer 190 and the Embraer 195 that uh, play in that, that particular market segment. We've been very successful in the past 10 years with the E-Jets uh, and the 190 and 195 specifically on that uh, particular segment. Uh, we see three main applications for the airplanes on, on that segment. One is uh, right sizing uh, larger narrow body operations. So uh, a lot of airlines, they fly larger capacity narrow bodies on markets which are really more appropriate for airplanes in this seat category. So they, they end up flying with uh, load, low load factors or, or with low frequencies, or sometimes uh, they even get the load factor, but they have to discount so much on the fares to, to fill up the airplane that uh, the operation is not uh, as profitable as it could. So uh, we believe that airplanes like the Embraer 190 and 195 could much better uh, serve that particular kind of operation, so right sizing, narrow body operations. We, sometimes we also call it uh, uh, complementing narrow body operations. So on off-peak hours of the day or uh, uh, during considering seasonalities uh, throughout the year, uh, using the larger capacity airplanes for, for the, the periods where you have higher demand and the smaller capacity airplanes like the 190, 195, complementing the larger airplanes for the, for the lower demand periods. So that was, uh, that, that's really the first application. The se second type of application uh, is uh, opening up new routes. Uh, when, when an airline is expanding and flying into new markets, uh, it's a much lower risk decision to go with an airplane with a significantly lower trip cost. Uh, a very good example of that is JetBlue here in the US. When JetBlue, they start operating into new markets, they usually start with the Embraer 190. Until that market matures and, and they are able to build demand for the airplane, uh, and eventually that market will, may grow into a larger capacity airplane uh, like A320s or 737, 800s. Right. And, and finally, the third type of application, it's really, uh, it's more, it's, it's basically a replacement application. There are still a lot of, a, a lot of many, a, a lot of old airplanes in this uh, size category flying out there, like Fokker 100s, still some Avros, uh, 737 500s, uh, uh, A318s, Th these type of airplanes, they can be replaced by, by airplanes like the Embraer 190 and 195 in that particular market. Just this morning, um, I was with a group having breakfast with Jeff Nittle from uh, CIT, and he spoke about this issue in a different way. Um, obviously, the, the segment you're looking at is, let's say, 737, 700, or the 319 kind of segment on the like you said 318 the smaller segment from the optimum sized airplane mm -hmm. and he spoke about obviously these are shrinks mm -hmm. and he said a very interesting thing he said shrinks is almost always de-optimized which I think is kind of what you're saying in terms of having the right sizing for the for the market yes yes uh, in a certain way we we agree with Jeff's comments uh, we, we believe that shrunk airplanes you were always uh, somehow compromised in the performance uh, when we look at the at the e-jet family uh, the current e-jets we have four airplanes the 170 175 190 and 195 the base airplanes are the 170 and the 190 uh, they have their own wing specific wing and, and engine so the 170 has a smaller wing and a smaller engine the 190 has a smaller uh, has its own wing and, and engine and then we have the stretch airplanes where we uh, give away a little bit of the performance of the airplane so uh, slightly shorter range we, we uh, give away a little bit of the fuel performance in exchange of a gain in the economics uh, so that's that's how we see we, we pretty much uh, we, we, we believed on on two airplane families for, for uh, a certain type of wing and engine 
uh, when you do a shrink aircraft, uh, it's a low development investment, but the end pro product, uh, it, it, it usually overperforms in terms of aircraft performance, but it's, uh, it, it usually has very low economics, very poor economics. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the case for the 737-700 and the A319, and we believe it's going to be the case for the 737-7 MAX and the 319 new. Uh, so those airplanes will not be really uh, uh, very competitive in terms of economics for that particular market segment. On the E2 family, the larger airplane we have is the 195 E2, which is slightly smaller than the 700 and the 319. So uh, for, an airplane, for an airline looking at, air, at an airplane in that particular uh, segment. Uh, if they're really looking at maximizing the economics of the airplane, we believe the 195E2 is the best solution. If they have uh, uh, a specific need, really just for a niche fleet, very small uh, number of airplanes, and they already operate the 320s and, and 800s, then of course the, the 19 or the 737-700 could make sense for them. I'm glad you brought that up. Let, let's let's take a look at the current E90. Then now you have a new version called the Advanced. We we, we don't call it Advanced, right? We, we it's part of our strategy to keep continuously improving the product. Mm -hmm. So uh, since the the jets entered into service back in two thousand and four, we have been continuously improving the airplane. So this is uh, I would say it's just another another cycle of improvements that we are doing. The airplanes that we are really naming differently is the E2 family that is coming into the market in 2018. Uh, and, and that's a, a really, uh, uh, it's a big uh, improvement on the airplane. We, in addition to adding new engines on the airplane, we are also developing completely new wings, operating the systems of the airplane. So that airplane really deserves a different name because it's a, it's a different animal. Right. Uh, the current jets we have been continuously evolving on it, uh, the, the airplane, and in the past two years we did another cycle of improvement. So the one that we saw this week um, uh, that was so sort of shown to the world for the first time with the new yes. winglets, uh -huh. how much of an improvement is that one over the previous model? In, in total, in yeah. fuel burn, for example. Yeah, in total, it was about six uh, six point four percent in fuel burn on a trip fuel basis uh, for for a typical sector. It, it was based on a six hundred nautical mile sector. The numbers may change a little bit depending if we're looking at uh, longer or shorter sectors. Uh, that's a very, that, that's, that's a an improvement for the 175. That's a huge, huge improvement. It's though. a huge improvement. It's a huge improvement. We we did several modifications on the airplane. Uh, a very extensive uh, aerodynamic uh, cleaning process, uh, re reducing or, or improving the aerodynamics of the airplane. We we uh, changed some systems of the aircraft, like the anti-ice system to bleed less air from the from the engine. Uh, the air conditioning uh, room air doors, we, we, we added some mechanism so that uh, those doors, they generate less drag when the airplane is, uh, is flying in, in a cruise condition. And, uh, and, and th those modifications that I just listed, they are applicable for the four airplanes in the family, the 170, 175, 190, and 195. And particularly, and this one is only for the 175, we developed new wing tips. Uh, they are significantly bigger than the current uh, winglets that we have on the airplane and they, they brought also uh, a very uh, uh, significant improvement in fuel burn. So overall on the 175 we, we are gaining 6.4 uh, improvement in fuel burn. On the other airplanes as they don't have the new wingtip the improvement is smaller is somewhere between 1 and 2 percent depending on the aircraft model and the conditions that you are looking at. So when we look at the, the E2 version, what, what are the percentage numbers that we're going to see, that we should expect improvement over the, this latest version? Um, on the 175 E2, when we compare it to the original 175, 
it's a 16% improvement in fuel burn uh, when we look at the fuel burn per seat basis. So uh, this version, this improved version now, we have 6%, 6.4%. Uh, so when we look at E2, it's another 10% on a fuel burn per seat basis. Right. And, the, and the 190, 195? The 190 is 16% compared to the current 190, and the 195 is 23%, again, on a fuel burn per seat basis. 23% is a huge number. It is. It's a very big number. Uh, of course, the 195 is benefiting uh, from the fact that uh, we, we are stretching the airplane, uh, so the 195 V2 will be three seats, three seat rows longer than the current 195. It's a four abreast configuration, so it's 12 additional seats. So uh, part of the 23% improvement on the 195 comes from the fact that we are stretching the airplane and right. adding more seats. Uh, but still, it's a very significant improvement on the on the aerodynamic efficiency of the airplane and the engine efficiency. Right. Last question for you, when you look, when a lot of people are talking about this in the industry, that the E-Jets as they are now, and then the move to the E-2, people would rather be buying the E-2 than the current E-Jet, so there is going to be potentially what they're calling a production gap. So obviously Embraer has to be very careful of how to, I mean, you've got the same thing with Neo and the same thing with Max. Mm -hmm. um, obviously they do deals to get those, mm -hmm. that gap closed. What is Embraer going to do to ha manage that gap? That, that's a challenge that every OEM, like you mentioned, uh, faces when they, uh, when they develop a new airplane. So you mentioned the new, the MAX, there is also the 777X with, with Boeing, right? Where they, every airplane manufacturer has to manage this, this transition. Uh, in our view, uh, they, particularly for the E-Jets, and when we talk to the airlines and we look at our uh, at, at how demand is evolving for our airplanes, uh, we expect to have a, a, a steady demand of, uh, of the current generation E-Jets until the E-2 enters into service. Every airline, they have their particular needs. Some airlines, they, uh, they have immediate needs for, for, for adding airplanes in this capacity. Uh, they are not able to, to wait all the time for the E-2, so we uh, we are pretty confident that we're going to have a kind of a stable transition from the current e jets into the E2. Last year was a very successful year for Embraer in terms of sales of the current generation e jets that we are calling E1s. Uh, we, we sold hundreds of them, particularly here in the U.S., and uh, that already helped uh, us paving this way uh, for, for a smooth transition. So you don't have to do you guys are not expecting to do any deep discounts to close that gap? No, no, not at all. We, we don't see the need for that. Thank you. Welcome.